you for James for asking me to speak today. And thank you for Antifa for showing up. You say you don't care about us, but clearly you do. There's 150 of you starting a riot over there. Society is a permanent state of change. Some may say this change is positive, a step to you is utopia. But when one can harass and assault someone due to an organisation's fear of discriminating, I say society has continued its collapse. Our political system is one based on secular ideology, with a legal system heavily based on Christianity. Laws, for the most part, exist for primarily one reason, to protect people. But this has changed drastically. Rather than being a tool to protect the people, laws are used to punish the hard-working citizens. If the punishment of the crime is money, then there's only a punishment for the working class. Transgenderism has swiftly evolved into a plague. I'm not talking about the real transgenders, the ones who feel trapped in their body and don't shove it down our throats. The disease of the men and occasional women with ulterior motives, putting on a wig and a dress, invading female spaces and attempting to contaminate the minds of innocent, impressionable children. Evidently, a man can go into a female space, expose himself in front of a woman and leave scratch free, purely because an institute or organisation doesn't want to be seen as discriminating against a minority group. Similar to the UEA, an unnamed secondary school was recently accused by Liz Truss, who of course is our pro pro former Prime Minister, for who served for 50 days, but is also the MP for South West Norfolk. She accused this school of allowing male students to take photographs of female students trying to use the female toilet. We now have teenagers, perhaps unknowingly, abusing the trans and non-binary label. Are we surprised though? Have we seen how many trans flags, pride flags, how many safe spaces they have in schools. When debating crime, it's often stated that the white straight male is a lead perpetrator. Disregarding how difficult it would be to measure those statistics in the first place, how can we accurately measure this? We have seen time and time again that criminals who are part of the minority group are not getting reported. Not only is this on institutes and the police, who rather than cowering on their knees, should be protecting the people, but normal everyday people are scared to report crimes nowadays in case they get harassed, defamed online or perhaps small businesses getting shut down for being transphobic. In a way, I experienced something similar. When I was in high school, I was getting bullied. They tried to make me commit suicide. Water under the bridge. I don't care anymore. The school didn't do anything when, they brought, when I brought this up to them. Instead, all I got was a fake apology from the students, and I know it was fake because they started harassing me again, and I got pitched out of school. They encouraged me to go homeschooling. Rather than punishing the perpetrators, they'll punish the victims, try and kick them out, shut them up. The kids who bullied me went on to break one of my friend's noses about a year afterwards. I see the same thing happening today but the perpetrators are a part of a protected group. Victims, essentially, are told to shut up and keep quiet. The amount of people I see online having to leak their stories because the police, the councils, therapists, they won't do anything about the report. It's absolutely abhorrent. No justice served, no help received. The LGBT community has demanded from day one that they get equality, and I agree, let's be equals. If someone commits a crime, a man assaulting a woman in a female changing rooms by chance. Let's call it out. Let's don't, don't stay silent of be, in fear of being exphobic. Simply saying that I, as a woman, am un uncomfortable with a man in my changing rooms, I am now transphobic. Let's keep female spaces female.